Hey, everybody. So it is the start of the new year. We are kicking this thing off. And listen, I am no weatherman, but I think given that it's the start of the new year, we should look at a forecast of trends lately. So let's see what we have here. We have trends in the upcoming year, like slang, things like Delulu, right? Or like she ate that. Whereas like in my mind, that translates to like a nice night at Cheesecake Factory, but Gen Z would beg to differ, right? We have social norms, like the thruple is out and monogamy, also the manipulation, lying and cheating, it's back in. It's the vibe. It's the trend. We also have fashion trends, right? We have an, a trend I heard about right now that is literally wearing underwear, like may as well have your granny panties as pants. And oh, wait. How could I forget, but segregation, <laughs> actual segregation. I'm actually, I'm laughing because it is that absurd. And what is actually the F going on? I am not kidding guys. Okay. You take a look at the news and it's like Jim Crow in reverse is back on the scene. Like this shit is going out of style, you know, but actually not really because apparently that people just want it around for the long haul. Like, I guess we didn't have enough. Like, they just can't get enough, you know? And it's so crazy to me because I thought about it. And I feel like this whole thing, we're seeing it in the story that I'm going to bring to you today that kicked all of this nonsense and chaos off is a story in a Chicago high school, but we're seeing it in college campuses. We see it, you know, societally. We see it, you know, all kinds of ways. Um, you know, in Hollywood, which I'm going to talk about. And it's crazy because the Mean Girls revival musical that absolutely nobody asked for, like even Grace Kelly, like nobody asked for this. I feel like this segregation station is hijacking the Mean Girls moment. You know what I mean? It's like, what is the lesser of two evils at this point? I don't even know. Like, why does it got to do that? Again, it's really just beyond my brain is broke it is splintered into a million pieces it's, you think about it you know that like why are these people so obsessed with it? why are they trying to bring Jim Crow like I said but in reverse back it's like back then the white people were the Regina Georges the mean girls and now we have another round of it, like the upcoming class. Like what is going, what is going on? I really feel like that is a metaphor for the situation. It is giving, you can't sit with us. And I'm going to explain why, but this is like the actual mean girls. Okay. Of the mean girls, ghosts of past and present. So this all started with a story that one of my listeners sent me today about a Chicago high school that's offering segregated classes, okay? And by the way, I also want to say, if you're hating, like haters are going to hate, you're drinking the haterade. And if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh, here we go, some entitled, privileged white girl rattling on about segregation, like as if you ever saw the light of day and know what you're talking about. I put it out to my inbox is open, baby. Take that as you will. I, I, I don't see you offer. Why don't you offer up some constructive ideas and solutions? I will wait. Okay. I'm here for by all means. Okay. This is an open, this, this is an open house, townhouse. Okay. Town hall, if you, <laughs> if you will. So this is that's what I have to say about that. Right. And this is also nothing new. I mean, we've been dealing with this since like the rapture occurred of our mental well being. Again, are all these people okay? Of the last, I would say six or so years, six or seven years, like seven year itch, seven year, let me go jump off a bridge, may, may as well. And I also don't want this to be like, I was thinking about it prepping for this episode. This is super impromptu, by the way. My, the um, listener literally sent me this story this morning. Okay. And it is like 3 PM sharp. So we're kind of just going for it. 
And I thought about it doing this episode because at the face of it, we all know that this is ridiculous. And I thought, I really don't want this to be like a Fox News rant of like up in arms. Like this is this kind of stuff. Fox News and the like love this because it gives it gives gives them shit. Like the my pillow ads are coming in for days. Like it get, gives them stuff to rant and rave about four days. And I thought, I really don't want to just make this like, we get it. We all know it's absurd. You know, we all know it's almost laughable at this point. So I don't want it to just be like, Oh, this is so stupid. But like, take it to like, what is actually going on? Other parallels I see in this when it comes to men and women, again, when it comes to Hollywood and where we can go from here for the love of God. So with that being said, the story of Chicago, the Chicago high school offering segregated classes. And again, this ain't nothing new. Just a couple to rattle off a couple of examples off the top of my head. I think that my favorite one, um, straight up fresh and ripe out of the twilight zone was from 2022 when a UC Berkeley off campus housing organization literally banned. It was for people of color and literally banned white people. I'm not, I am literally not even kidding. It's like, if you so much as bring a white person on our grounds, on this grass, like you have to notify us, you have to group me us, you have to carry your pigeon us. Like it's a whole thing. Like, what are you people even saying? In 2018, this, I don't know, this one rivals that, right? For insanity. Uh, the College Evergreen in Ohio, ha and this got a lot of controversy at the time. I can't imagine why. I just can't rack my brain on why. Had a day of absence, aka, I shit you not, a day of no white people. Like offering a uh, safe space as of many of these ideas, right? Because they argue like people of color need a safe space and need to be away from white people. And so it's funny because we just had Martin Luther King Day. This guy would be rolling in his grave. Like, again, even like, don't come on our premises. Don't come in this organization. You know, there was another college that offered, um, oh, you know what it was funny enough? it's giving Claudine day it offer it was Harvard and they offered like a separate separate like segregated section in the audience for a rendition of Macbeth like what like it's giving Rosa Parks like what what are you guys even what is even the fuck happening um also there was a big kind of flare up last year in the summer of last year of anti-Asian racism that just came out guns blazing and guns swinging to the light from the progressive left, oddly enough, because I mean, like math is never mathing in that regard in their brains. But what happened was Asians were just becoming a little too successful. Like we can't be having that. I'm sorry. Like it's not, it's not going to happen. We can't, it's, you guys are just, you know, you were thriving a little too much. And, you know, we, that's just not an environment, I guess, anyone we really want to be in when, you know, they're, they're populating 40 to 60% of colleges sidebar, which is an, what an actual CNN correspondent said at the time. Okay. And what happened was it came in the wake of a Supreme Court decision in 2022 in that colleges cannot enroll students solely based on race because of discrimination against Asians by who do you have it but our good old sane morality thinking folks at Harvard. And so the Supreme Court, you know, comes out with a thing in 2022, which is like, you can't, you know, admit students just solely based on race. And the progressive left were had progressive right which lol in and of itself the irony um were having a field day because they were skewering the asian folks being like well wait a they were literally calling okay try to try have a moment try to make your brain make sense of this they were calling whites they were calling Asians white supremacists. They were like, this is a white supremacist dream and Asians are just a mask for white supremacy and their accomplice and shame on you to all the Asians for spitting on the shoes of all the people who helped you come into this country and thrive. Like all the people of color, you know, like you, a way to just spit in their face. Like, 
I need a, I need a moment. Like I need a moment to regroup my thoughts. So all that goes to say, this is the kind of crowd and the kind of backwards nonsensical thinking that we are actually dealing with. And I really considered on this, in this episode, because I am a rabbit hole type of gal. Like I will dive first into the weeds, into the abyss, like into the stats. And I thought, should I look at stats at how, you know, competent students in this area, their, their proficiency in writing, reading, does it help them? Is it beneficial to them, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought, I'm actually not going to do that because I have a working brain and can absorb what's going on in the world. And I think a sensical, logical mind um, to assess things. And also stats are absolute trash, period. I hate stats. I am not a stats girl. Stats can prove anything. Like I'm sure there is a stat on NPR as we speak, proving that the sky is green. So I think like, there, there's a stat to prove everything, right? But I did want to acknowledge, okay, like, why would somebody, why would these organizations, these entities, these leaders, these people advocate for, I've even, I'm sure have had, I think have had people on my show advocating for this and why it makes sense. And I could see them saying, you know, segregating students of color, offering them safe spaces where they aren't triggered by white people, namely white men. And, you know, and in the classroom in high school and college, give them an environment. Maybe they don't learn the same way as white kids. Maybe they need what is best for them to foster the best environment for them to learn, to grow and all of that. So I'll acknowledge that, but I will also put on the record that I think that the way that you are going about this is absolute fucking nonsense. So period, point blank on that. I said what I said. Because also, is this a world that you want your, I really thought about it, right? Like in all seriousness, do I want my kids growing up in a world where so much merit and importance is placed on skin color and further separating people? Again, I know we joke, but it's like, why on God's green earth? No, not blue, not blue, the associated press on God's green earth. Would we want to go back to that? Like, I don't want my kids in an environment where they are separated by skin color. I want us to all be celebrated and learn from each other and grow from each other and, you know, thrive in the richness of that. So to me, it's like we can joke all day long, but I think that this is the dumbest shit ever. And so even, right, like I've been thinking about it. And I thought, okay, well, you're a white woman, you know, put yourself, it, it, we're going to, we're going to get to the woman angle next, but cause I totally see so many parallels here and I'm sure you do too, but I thought about it. Like, how could I somewhat put the lens on to where I can understand or empathize or relate? And I thought with everything going on right now, even as a Jew, right? Like I want people who are not Jewish. I don't need to be going to ring around the rosy at temple or at gatherings or get togethers with other Jews to console each other about like, we all know what's going on. We all know how we feel. I want other people to understand. I want to bring them into the mix. I love nothing more than having these conversations with people in my life who aren't Jewish. Why in the world would I want to just sit with a bunch of other Jews and validate each other's feelings? Like where does that, that doesn't get us anywhere. So I certainly don't want that. And now as for the woman card, my wheelhouse is again, this idea of like, how far is too far between like, it's almost like pick a lane, pick a side, right? It's like, you want equality, but then we, when we get that, you want to isolate yourselves. And that's not the way to integration or to equal opportunity in my mind, right? So recently, as it pertains to like men and women, if that is still a thing, if it's a thing of the past, I don't know. Like to be determined, it depends on the day, you know, it depends on how the Ivies are feeling that day. Like they can't decide what's anti-Semitic. They can't decide what sex is. They're just really confused. If anything, I think that we should have a segregated class for the Ivy League presidents and educate them 
on facts and the state of the world and what's going on. Like, instead of like being in each other's assholes, I don't know. Like, it's just a thought, but maybe we should, maybe that is the one segregation that I can get behind. So I recently watched, and I was so excited to watch this. I watched a, um, I'm a little late to the party, but that's okay. Like the party ain't start till I walk in. So you're welcome to this endeavor. But I watched the debate that the free press had a couple of months ago. And the free press is my Bible. You guys know Barry Weiss and like, and co I quote them all the time and guess the fuck what bitches we are getting someone huge from the free press on this show in the foreseeable future. So I can't wait. Oh my God, I'm so excited. My nipples are hard. They're tingling. So they threw their first in-person event. And if you don't know what the free press is, Jesus, get your lives off of Jupiter if you're crying out loud. Um, But it's Barry Weiss's, the free press. It's what she writes. It doesn't have any narrative. She was a very accomplished editor over at the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal. She was the opinion editor and she really came out swinging about the false narratives and fake news, so to speak, and censorship and cherry picking and all of this. So took matters into her own hands and started this trailblazing um, media platform that is just literally like infiltrating the ether. And I don't even care. Like I'm, I'm so here for it. I'm obsessed. So they have their first in-person debate, which is, did the sexual revolution fail us? And it made me think, while these two things certainly are not the same, I, I do, you know, it's natural to make these parallels, right? Because both of them have to deal with revolutions, with progress, with change, with causes, advocacy, what have you, whether it be race and segregation, whether it be women's rights um, and, and equality, right? So... It was really interesting to watch because you had one side that argued yes. And these are all women, all young uh, women who are moms and obviously, you know, in the media in some capacity and whatever. So you had one side argue, yes, the sexual revolution failed us. Why? Because, you know, women are unhappy. Women aren't having sex. They're not getting married. They're not having babies. If anything, the sexual revolution just reaffirmed the mind of a male because now they're having casual sex like people are settling down later it's like a male's fantasy so it may as well be like the male revolution right of our time then you had obviously the pro the sexual revolution has not failed us and for that I mean it's it's obvious right like the fact that they're even on the stage having the debate like autonomy the pill not being subjected if you were to get pregnant and then that's your whole life you're not in the workforce you can't go after your dream um you know contraception abortion all these things right and how far women have come and accelerated in all these sectors of life so for me like i'm personally in that camp and while i don't think it's perfect which they acknowledge it's like, again, it's to me, it's like common sense. Cause it's like with all this, well, what's the alternative? We go back to the sexual revolution and we are like, again, it's giving like what the Rosa Parks situation and you can't sit with us. Mean Girls is giving is, is to segregation in these colleges and high schools. It's giving like you are a Stepford wife and you will make my apple pie on period bitch and speak up and I swear to God like it is giving separate wives right so it's just not a good look it's just not cute like what is the alternative in in going back and so I really thought about it and you know I had this issue when it comes to like integrating everybody and intersectionality I really thought it reminds me so much, like say these organizations on campus, that's like white people cannot come here. You're not welcome. It made me think of all the Hollywood events that I would cover as a reporter that were so like, yay, rah, rah, women's power summit, women's this, that panel, blah, blah, blah. And you could go back in time, bitch. And that back in time portal is called my YouTube. At the time, even then, I was like, where are all the guys here? Like, again, it's like, what is 
riling each other up and speaking to each other, bouncing in this like discovery zone ball pit playhouse going to get accomplished, right? So like, where are the guys? Shouldn't they be the ones hearing this? Same thing as a Jew. Like I want non-Jews to hear this. Like, where is any of this getting any of, and where is any of this getting us? And it made me think about that with all of this, right? Like for any cause, for any progress, for any evolution, I just, I don't think like jerking each other off to our own ideas is, is helping at all. And so that was really, you know, my issue with that. And I remember even taking it to the carpet, I would ask the celebrities there like, yeah, we're at this event and that's great. But like, where are all the guys? Shouldn't they be here? Shouldn't they see this? And that's so unpopular, right? Because of the thing, it's like the counterculture, like, no, 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 no. Like they are not worthy. They've had their time in the sun. They shouldn't be here, blah, blah, blah. So it was definitely like a little bit of a, I don't want to say contentious, but it definitely was a little ballsy to go there. But then you had some people that were like a hundred, like, I don't see them. Like maybe Maybe like, did we lose them? Like what, what's, what's happening here? So, um, in the end, you know, of the sexual revolution, uh, did it fail us debate both? I feel like it's like, it's this idea applies to all of this, right? Like both sides ended up coming to the common ground of look, you know, it's not perfect, but what can be applied, what can be implemented, what can be done that to make it better, you know, and even Grimes as like erratic and as like a real life anime pixie dust fairy as she is was on it. She even offered, you know, maybe this, this environment isn't particularly supportive for women who have children. Like, why is it that we make pregnant women make, you know, wait in the back of the line at airport, airport security, or there's no, um, you know, child's, care uh what is it you know well I'm like you know all that stuff <laughs> I sound like Joe Biden you know the thing about the thing um at, at at work offices you know what I mean it's not where we want it to be but again what is the alternative of like do we just kick and scream about how shitty it is or even worse again revert back to how it was like my goddamn nightmare um and so we see this right even with Hollywood it's like the the wave of the DEI, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion, which also applies to schools and all that nuttiness over there. And you have all of the quotas and, and all this, right? And again, they put these kind of extreme box quick fixes on these things. And it's like, is this really helping us? Like, is this really serving us or making it better? Because you know, I've said this from the beginning. It's like, again, I can acknowledge where someone's coming from and that like, no, it gives people more opportunity. Like, does it? I don't know. Sure. But at the same time, I've always been a firm believer that this has just put, this is going to sound insensitive, but has put a wet blanket, damper, uptight rules on what art is supposed to be, which is out of the box and visionary and provocative and moving. But instead it's made it so, you know, contrived and everybody's so scared in Hollywood. You know, I saw it happen from the inside out, how, you know, panties and a wad everyone was about everything. And even when it comes to art, I mean, I talk about comedy all the time, but name like an acclaimed really out there and like Dave Chappelle doesn't count because he's so like culturally despised and hated like there are voodoo dolls of him up the wazoo I'm sure at all of these college campuses but <laughs> to be found in Claudine Gay's office no but um besides him right like name a really out there comedian who just does not give a fuck and go goes for it that's really like a renegade of our time you know it kind of feels like it's come to a halt and a standstill there have been so many you know Richard Pryor like it just goes on and on and now everybody's just like scared little wussies and even on the artistic side I thought about it and Barbie doesn't count okay because again it took over our atmosphere okay like the Elon Musk Jeff Bezos spaceship in the sky dick party that we never asked for or saw coming so that doesn't count but that movie aside name an award 
nominated show movie like I'll wait I'll patiently wait aka no one cares aka all of this has sucked all of I think like not all of it that's a little aggressive and extreme but like so much creativity and spunk and you know allure out of it so I just think again forcing it is this really better so when you think about how it's crazy because I feel like what's happening, this applies to so many issues and to so many areas. It even applies to trans issues, right? It's like, if you can acknowledge that, you know, this guy shaved his nuts today and therefore he should be in the ring at this UFC match against Ronda Rousey or this woman because he is technically a woman or get lost. Like you have no say in this public debate or conversation. Like it, it, it applies to everything thing or the idea of again these safe spaces or we shouldn't allow these people and we should be entitled to feel safe and and exclude these people out it applies to so many issues and I have to say I always on this show well I, I try to when I can and when it's relevant but applaud the old school gaze not the politically correct uptight finicky ones that we see now that are upset by everything like again the old school gays are like we didn't ask for this like sweetie we did not fight that hard for this um for you just to like wither away in your identity like be loud be proud be gay be out there baby <laughs> but I feel like this is where the gays had it right and this is why they were so successful not to say that it wasn't an uphill battle and a climb and didn't come without its you know, challenges and it's wars, but it's like, this is why they were so, I mean, look at where they are now. It's so, it's, it's gone so far to gay people being integrated into society that they're literally called privileged. I'm not, do you guys remember when, speaking of Asians, crazy, rich, successful, educated Asians, like how dare you, when I had the Asian director, gay director on my show for a really, um, popular documentary that he made Alex Liu I think was his name and I talked to him at the time I'm like who would have thought that our culture has gone so bananas that you guys as gays are considered privileged like what am what are we even saying but all that goes to say they were so successful because they did not ice everybody out right and they like really made everybody see the party and see the fun and the joy in it all and I think that's what it's really about, right? So when it comes to solutions of, again, instead of just ranting and raving about how chaotic and like <laughs> numb nutting, <laughs> nut numbing this all is, um, why, what are all these like balls and nuts, Freudian slips? I don't know, but that's something to be dissected on another day. Um, as is what I opened with, which is the idea of like throuples and polygamy and all that being out and monogamy being in like something worth discussing later, a little sidebar tap there. But um, the solutions now aren't working point blank period. And so I don't even know, again, prepping for this episode, I, you know, I'm not the political science, you know, genius of our time. Actually, I am. But, you know, I don't want to make everybody else feel bad about themselves. Like, I'm still going to, like, you know, keep their confidence and their ego boost up. You know what I mean? But I don't have actual solutions. I know we all have common sense, like things that could be implemented societally, culturally, and policy, right? But the way I see it, we have three things right now, and none of them ain't, they ain't doing shit. We have the Fox News conservative approach of the denial of everybody's on an equal playing field and everybody starts from a to b and 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 in theory i love that sentiment like i love the enthusiasm of the american dream you can make something out of nothing you know the pursuit of happiness blah blah but the reality is not everybody people do have disadvantages and we're not all at the same starting line right so it's like reckoning with the reality of that and again like being in the stratosphere <laughs> Um, the other is what we've talked about today, these forced rules, these boxes, and, you know, it, all, all of that, like forcing people into these camps and ideologies. And the worst, which is a little bit of, of a fusion of the, of the last one, is reverting back to the old ways. Like, again, segregation, making a comeback. You know, like it never went out of style, like the bell bottoms of John Travolta's Saturday Night Fever that uh, is just making its way back in our lives. So 
how do we make all of this better? Right. Because obviously right now, like when I say this ain't working, look like we're in it, we're living in it. it it's hostile. It's divided. And it's not what I want. I don't know. Like who's having a good time. Raise your hand again. I'll wait. So, and, and by the way, my classroom is open to my classroom is I do not discriminate, you know, like my classroom is open to whoever it is, you, whoever it is. Okay. If you're pulling a Mrs. Doubtfire today, you know, and your testicles and your Johnny's apple and your low voice and everything is popping. And, you know, you feel like prancing around like Liza Minnelli, you know, you are welcome in my, the cancel me baby class. Like unlike these fools and these clowns, I ain't discriminating, but obviously again, this kind of mean girls oriented way of thinking of the, you can't sit with us of the click more extreme and serious versions are the ideas of right. Like no white people are allowed. No men are allowed. No, whatever are allowed. It's like, where, again, where does that get us? I get the adrenaline hit of like, oh, this is fun and exciting. Like you can't sit with us, but then what? So I feel like we really have to look at, I mean, I don't think that this should be an outcome-based process because like when, when has that gone well? I think that this needs to be a like process oriented, right? And in my mind, just off of the top of my head, it's like educating our ourselves and our kids on our past, like full stop, 100%, all of this like bullshit on both sides of book burning this, that history, da, da, da. It's like facts are facts, bitch, right? So having that in our public <laughs> consciousness, celebrating progress, I preach the power of this a lot, celebrating progress and also each other, because that's the, the joy of it all. And also, you know, acknowledging reality, acknowledging whether it be, you know, racial issues or the sexual revolution or whatever it is like Hollywood, who cares? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, recognizing the reality of where we failed and where we can make it better. And like anything, it's a process, you know, it's not going to happen overnight, and I think most importantly with all of this is in, in spirit of the show and spirit of all of this is open dialogue, like peoples and ideas, peoples, <laughs> my peoples, people and ideas outside of your own and really being open to that and thriving in that. And again, not isolating, segregating anybody out of any conversation. You know what I mean? Like, I know it's trying to make a comeback, but at the end of the day, do you really want to be a Regina George? 